Abbott, we're live. <laughs> 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 uh, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today um, for this great session with um, where we'll learn how to get going with Jamboard in G Suite for Education. Um, we are joined today by uh, myself. I'm Abid Patel. Uh, I'm the IT Director at Leading Learn Trust. We've also got uh, Stephanie Howell, um, who is the Instructional Tech Coordinator at the Pickerington Local Schools District in Ohio, USA. And to take you through Jamboard is um, Rachel Coltup. She's the uh, lead teacher technology for learning uh, at the Leo Academies Trust um, uh, in London. Uh, so uh, Stephanie and I um, uh, will be handling the chat on the um, on YouTube. So uh, if you've got any questions, please fire them um, away uh, on the chat. Um, and uh, Rachel, um, it's uh, over to you to uh, take it away. Thank you. I'll just wait for my screen. Perfect. So I'm gonna take you in to Jamboard today. Uh, and a couple of things uh, just to sort of note is that there are two versions uh, of Jamboard. So there's the Chrome uh, browser version uh, that a lot of people are used to using. And this can be accessed just simply by going to jamboard.google.com. Um, and you'll see here that this then uh, comes through uh, and as it is as what you see right now. Uh, there is also the Jamboard app. Um, and this can be accessed either on a phone or a um, tablet. So whether that's an iPad or maybe even a, a touchscreen Chromebook, um, if you've got one of those. Um, so if you don't already have the Jamboard app, um, I definitely recommend installing it. Um, there's definitely some extra functionality, which I'll go into. Uh, but for the majority of you, you uh, you're probably just using uh, either a desktop or a laptop maybe. Um, so I'll go through the um, Chrome version of Jamboard. Um, so I'll take you through some sort of lesson samples and some ideas to get you going uh, and then we'll sort of jump into doing a little bit of a collaborative task as well. Uh, so you'll notice just at the top here that these are all of my uh, Jamboard so I can quickly access, which makes it really easy to do. Um, and I can also quickly go in and duplicate any. So if I want to make changes to one or I want to use the same one uh, for a collaborative group, this is a really nice way to be able to do that. You'll also notice that in the top left corner of my screen here, I can customize that background. Uh, so I can either just have sort of no background. Uh, I can have dots uh, for maths as well as um, ruled lines, grid reference, uh, both in uh, white and gray, uh, and then just a um, chalkboard as well to be able to use um, there. And then all of your tools appear on the left-hand side of the screen here. Um, so you have a pen. Um, now, this makes it a lot easier, um, obviously, if you're using a touchscreen device, because you can obviously go through um, and quickly annotate on your screen. Um, so I might simply just put in my Twitter handle here, like so. Uh, so I can go ahead and do that just using the um, pens option. Um, obviously, if you're using a laptop, then you're going to have to sort of um, take some time with that mouse uh, and go through and annotate. Um, but you can also use any of the different colors to sort of highlight uh, any key points. Um, I'm just going to go in and do a big exclamation mark in there. Uh, and obviously, you've also got the select option. So if you want to move anything around, maybe make it a little bit bigger, then you can do that as well. So this makes it really easy to sort of emphasize any key points uh, on your Jamboard when you do it. Um, and then I'll go into a couple of the other ones as I move through. So I'm going to get going. Uh, and you'll notice now that um, this is sort of an idea um, that um, you can use. Um, so if, in terms of doing some research uh, and you can get your pupils to actually go through um, and gather all of their information and um, collect their facts uh, and ideas. So it's a nice way to be able to do this. Um, again, these are just taken simply using the sticky note option here um, and you can go through and add in any facts. Um, so we often know uh, the clownfish by the famous movie 
Nemo. Um, and I'm going to make that orange and then I can simply just press enter. Um, and this will then, um, or save, I should say, so if it doesn't go through, uh, and then I can actually continue to add more of these around. And then I can just drag this over. Um, and again, I can reposition these and make them bigger as well. Um, and then on any sticky note, if I want to, I can duplicate that idea. Um, so this is a really fantastic way if you sort of want to use um, the same concept. So for example, when I was doing these fact ones, I duplicated and then just changed that last number to make it much easier as well. Um, one of the other things to sort of note uh, is that, for example, if I go in and duplicate this one, uh, just a little um, top tip that I learned the other day uh, was that actually if you open it up, um, if you're on a Chromebook device, um, you can use the dictation fact number three. Let's try that again. Fact three. And we'll just, and as you can see, um, let's just fix that up. But it is a nice way to be able to um, quickly pop those ideas in uh, using that voice type option rather than simply have to type through. So if you're doing uh, some feedback to people's work, then that's a really nice way to be able to use that uh, voice dictation option uh, if you're on a Chromebook. Um, you've also got the ability to add in any images so you can quickly do a Google image search and all of these images are copyright free. So this is a nice way to quickly add in uh, an image. And again, I can go in, uh, give that a moment to sort of load itself up. And then again, I can use those blue circles just to resize that picture there. Um, you'll also notice that you have a laser pointer. This is a really fantastic way to sort of highlight any key concepts uh, to your pupils as you go through uh, and do anything. You'll also notice this one. Now, I'm going to come back to this when I switch to the Jamboard app. Uh, so just stay tuned for that. Uh, so I'm going to jump into slide number uh, in my jam in three here. Um, and what's really nice about this is that um, this is just using um, images of content. Um, so as teachers, we're often looking for uh, content that we've used uh, and being able to quickly select the content that I'm looking for uh, and resize it means that I can actually then um, use that and talk about it. So it was the Queen's birthday here in the UK the other week um, and being able to sort of quickly zoom in, make that bigger and move it around the screen um, to focus in on something. Um, also, that laser pointer then to read through the Queen's birthday it makes it really easy to do. Um, again, a couple of other features here um, that I can quickly add in any content from my Google Drive using the Jamboard app, and I'll come back to that um, when I jump into the app here. But you'll see just how easy those sticky notes are to sort of point out any key concepts that I want to use. Um, and again, on those sticky notes, I can make those bigger um, to sort of highlight a key area. So if I'm looking at anything in particular, this is a nice way to sort of draw the point uh, to my learners so that they know exactly what I'm referring to. Um, so in the same way in the classroom where we might go through and highlight and annotate, I can quickly do this in Jamboard. Um, again, here, this is another one that I'll come back to uh, in the Jamboard app um, because it is using uh, that ability that we um, have access to. So I'll come back to this as well. Um, and again, here you'll start to see some of these um, icons appearing here and maybe it's a bit of inspiration um, of what you can do when you get into the Jamboard app. Um, again, what's really nice is that it's very easy to add in any content. Um, I wonder if we have any maths teachers uh, in the chat. Uh, they're always ones um, that sort of ask, how can we actually use maths content? Um, and if you're using the uh, fantastic text help Equatio extension, um, then you can actually pull in any content um, directly and paste it into your Jamboard. So I'm going to take you through how you do that now. Uh, so I'd simply just open up my Equatio math space. This is my favorite part um, of the Equatio toolbar. Um, and again, I can go into the smart shapes here and I can take a fraction bar. I can simply draw that fraction bar on. And then if I tap onto it, I can specify the number of labeled uh, shaded segments, I should say, sorry. Uh, and I might even show it as a fraction circle just to see how much my students actually understand about fractions and see if they really understand whether they are equal or not. Um, and again, I might just line these up here. Uh, and again, I can make those 
bigger, just to sort of have different comparisons there as I go through. Um, when I'm happy with what I want to use, um, again, I can simply tap on insert. Um, now this is going to add it into a Google Doc. So it's worth making sure that you have that Google Doc set up and ready to go. Um, I always like to use docs.new, uh, just a quick tip uh, to get onto a brand new doc straight away. Um, once it's there, I just simply use control C on my keyboard and then jump back into Jamboard. And I'm simply just gonna press Control V on the keyboard. And you'll notice that in just a few moments that has now added it on. So I'm gonna delete that old one and I'm just going to resize this here um, so that that can then take up that screen. And what I might use now is that, obviously I've got that sticky note here, but I might like to ask my students and say, ah, uh, these fractions equal, how do you know? And again, I can just simply tap on save and then pop that on the bottom. Um, so this is a nice way to be able to sort of share out any lesson content um, equally if I'm using Google Classroom, then I can use this Jamboard and push it out and I can actually set it to make a copy uh, for each student within my class so that they have the opportunity to actually go through and annotate uh, and work through this uh, problem as well. Um, so I'm going to move into some other um, maths examples here. Um, so, for example, that laser pointer that I've got on the computer makes it really easy to sort of go through and quickly annotate as I make my six groups, modeling to my learners exactly what they'd need to do to be able to do this. Um, again, if I just did a simple um, screen recording, then I can use that um, as a way to be able to then share this, especially during distance learning uh, where I don't have that ability to be able to do that maybe face to face if I'm not delivering a live lesson, um, then this is a really easy way to do that. And again, you can use those sticky notes down here to quickly highlight a point that you wanna share with your learners. Um, so making sure that you give them those little prompts and pop them to the side. And again, you'll see that this is just an image. So I've just simply gone in to add image. Um, so if you have any worksheets um, or lesson resources that you're already using, then you can simply just take those and quickly uh, take a screenshot of them and then add them in through here. So you can either just simply upload um, and select an image from your device to do so, um, or you can even add in any content from your Google Drive as well. Uh, so I'm gonna move through again here, uh, what is the time on the clock? Just simply using those sticky notes and then adding in an image of the clock. So again, for this one, I'm just gonna do a quick Google search and I'm gonna look for a clock. Um, and then I can simply just select one, pop it on. And then again, now I can actually start to set that up um, and then ask my learners to tell me what the time is on the clock. Um, so, and then they can use those sticky notes as a way to be able to um, share what the time is. Um, and again, you also do have that um, sticky note that doesn't have any colors. Um, so interestingly, someone uh, once said to me, how can you do just sort of any typing without it appearing that it's just a sticky note? Uh, so just a little top tip there, you can do that uh, if you sort of do that um, no color option on the sticky notes. Um, again, I'm just going to move quickly through these. Again, this is another example here um, of using the um, pen here. Um, so again, this just makes it really easy to be able to sort of annotate on the screen um, and with anything that you want to include there as well. Um, so another example here, again, this is just simply using um, some photos of some maths coins um, and then using those sticky notes to highlight what it is that either the topic is, what the focus is for the task, um, and then getting um, your learners to explain what it is that they're doing during that task. Um, and obviously, um, one of the nice things is that if you actually go around um, and select any content, you can obviously make that smaller. So if you're worried about the space that you're using, um, you can obviously make that smaller uh, so that you've got more space um, as you go through.
Um, again, a nice easy sort um, for younger learners is to use sticky notes and get them to sort. This could be done as a word sort, a maths sort, uh, it could be a shape sort as well. Um, and then simply just using those sticky notes to sort those numbers in um, like so. And again, um, as you go in to create them, it's really easy if you just simply use uh, your number there and then simply just um, keep tapping on save. That will allow you to automatically quickly create those um, without having to sort of keep going back uh, in and out um, there. So you've always got that option to do so. Um, and again, just that ability to quickly drag and move those numbers in. And again, just quickly being able to resize and move them around. Uh, so now for our English teachers out there, uh, just a couple of ideas. I know that um, ultimately any technology that we use always comes down to the hands of our teachers. Um, and ultimately, it doesn't matter how great our technology is, um, it's how creative our teachers are. Um, so this is just sort of a really key idea here to get you going with some ideas. Uh, so a really good idea um, is uh, something that we use quite often is we give our um, learners a um, image prompt um, and ask them to then come up with the story of you've woken up here on the beach, explain how you got here. And again, I've just simply used these sticky notes here as a prompt of how they might decide to start their story. Um, and then what I expect my learners to do is to then go through and add a sticky note to sort of build up that story across uh, that bar as well. Um, and it's worth noting as well that um, whilst this um, uh, graphic organizer that you can see here um, has been added uh, through the Jamboard app. You can equally just use any photos of any graphic organizers, tables, Venn diagrams. Um, I'm also going to quickly jump in back to Equatio because one of the things that uh, you may not be aware of is that in the shapes tool in Equatio, if you just tap on the more shapes option uh, and scroll down, there are Venn diagrams here. So you could actually go in, create a Venn diagram, copy and paste this directly into your Jamboard. So it makes it really easy to use them. Uh, so just a sort of little top tip there uh, for using Equatio. Um, and again here, prepositions with younger learners, um, being able to think about, okay, so we can see that the dog in this one here is sitting on top of the chair um, and then where is the cat so we can see the cat's tail is under here um, where is the cat where is the cat here and you can go through um, again you can use sticky notes to sort of highlight any key points um, about what it is that you're getting them to do during that task equally you can get them to use that pen option um, to sort of annotate um, and highlight any key parts um, as they go through and you might simply get them to label next to and uh, and so on. Um, and again, I can simply just drag those and move them around the screen just like so. Um, so just moving on. Um, so again here, um, I can quickly do sort of a word match and sort uh, to look at different word meanings. Uh, and again, just simply using two alternate colors um, makes it that one bit easier to sort of easily organize those ideas um, and getting pupils to think about what it is that makes those connections um, and maybe not even giving them a prompt. So doing almost like an odd one out task that we often do uh, and getting them to think about those areas there. Uh, again, here, just a simple um, photo of a piece of writing. Uh, so if you're doing any punctuation or grammar that you want to focus on, um, maybe you're simply going to read through first and use that laser pointer to highlight as you go. Um, and then again, going through this time and then putting in your, uh, your contractions or any changes that you want to highlight. You may even ask uh, your learners to say, okay, what, uh, what do we call a cloakroom or can we think of another word for this? Um, how could we describe the morning? Was it cold? Was it, um, was it dark? And try to think of um, the ways that they can do that as well. Um, again here, um, I'm going to jump into the Jamboard app to take you through uh, the next little bit. Um, so you'll notice that at the bottom of my Chromebook here, I have the Jamboard app. So I'm going to go ahead and make this full screen so that you can see. 
Um, so one of the things that you'll notice straight away, I'm going to open up a brand new uh, Jamboard here. Um, one of the things that you'll notice straight away is that there are a couple of more options that you see on the left-hand side of the screen now. So if I tap on the pencil now, um, there are there is the ability to use the assistive drawing tools. Now, if you're on a phone, a tablet, uh, got a touchscreen device, um, and you've got the Jamboard app installed, then you'll be easily able to use these assistive drawing tools. Now, this is a nice way uh, to sort of um, do any writing and you'll see that if I do a sort of half job attempt at some handwriting there that it will take that and put it into um, my word there. Now on the um, app it makes it really easy to quickly pinch and resize this content there and again I can equally move it anywhere that I want to on the screen. Um, so fish And if, for example, I end up doing more than I need to, I can simply just put a line through a letter, uh, so a little swish, and that will remove that letter for me. Uh, and I'm hoping that you're getting the theme of where I'm going. Uh, so I can easily just pop that in like so. Um, and if I wanted to add anything in as well, um, I can do that as well. So, for example, I'm just going to show you that if I take a letter away using that swipe, but then realized I needed to bring that back, I can use that little carrot option and then pop the letter in underneath. Oh, let's try that again. Let's try once more. It doesn't like it to doesn't like it today. <laughs> I just tested it before. Let's go. Okay. Let's go the other way. Yep, there we go. So if you do your letter first uh, and then that carrot, you'll be able to sort of add in uh, that letter if that does happen. So that assistive drawing is a fantastic option. Um, and you've also got the assistive drawing tools. Now, one thing that I'll mention here is that if ever you want to get a perfectly straight line, um, that shape tool is a brilliant way to be able to do that. I often see people trying to draw uh, tables and they just end up with squiggly lines. That shape uh, recognition tool makes it that one bit easier. Uh, you'll also notice down here that this special pen uses the assistive drawing tools. Um, now, one of the things is that, uh, if you don't know, is that I'm a terrible drawer. Um, so my fish is going to look like this. Um, and you'll see that just from um, my very quick sketch here that I can actually go in um, and create um, and use Google's auto draw. Um, so if you've ever played um, with that Google auto draw, you'll notice that these do come up here. And equally, maybe I wasn't thinking I wanted to draw a fish, but I was thinking I wanted to, uh, to do something else. Then if I keep scrolling along, I will see those options there as well. And again, I can quickly pinch and resize that um, if I want to. Um, also worth noting that the arrow that you see makes it really easy to quickly pick up any words you want to move around on your screen. And you'll notice that as I do that, that does then um, allow me to remove a word um, into a part of the sentence if it's not in the correct spot. Um, so that's always nice to be able to do. You still have that laser pointer. Um, so I can go through and highlight any content um, as I go through. Um, but one of the big benefits um, is that obviously that plus sign does hide those sticky notes, but they are down here. Um, and you obviously still have those images, which I showed you before. Um, but you can also go in uh, and use the camera option directly through here. Uh, and you can even go into the image library. Um, so if you have any images on your device, you can go in uh, and do that as well there. Um, and what you also have is the sticker section down the bottom. Um, and this is a great way to sort of upvote or star someone's idea or even uh, a quick mark um, using the tick or maybe even just a smiley face. And again, you can drag those on um, and then make those bigger if you want to as well. So I can simply draw a little circle around and I can pinch and make that bigger on my screen like so. So um, that little move arrow does come in handy to resize any content there. 
Uh, again, you do have some of those templates. So some of those things that you saw me using before, uh, for example, that maths clock makes it really easy to be able to do that. Um, so at this point, what I'm uh, going to get you to do uh, is I'm going to get you on to do a collaborative Jamboard task. Um, now, I'm not sure what our numbers are looking like right now, uh, but just get bear in mind that uh, Jamboard does have a limit of 60 people on a Jamboard. Uh, so to sort of structure that in a um, great way, and actually before I do, um, I'm just going to jump back into that Jamboard app because I remember that I did forget to show you something. Um, is that one of the really nice things that I can do is I can add any content in from my Google Drive here. So I can simply tap on here. What this will do is it will bring up my Google Drive and I can just simply tap on recent and I'm going to go ahead and select our uh, Jamboard slides that we're working from. I can then go ahead and expand this and take out any content that I want to use. If I don't want that anymore, I can then just go and move it to the bottom. This is a nice way to be able to easily refer back to it. Um, but again, equally, I can simply take that, make it nice and big so you all know uh, it's me if you've just joined recently. Uh, so please go and follow us uh, on Twitter if you're not already. Uh, but that's just to show you how easy it is to add in any content from your Google Drive as well. So we're going to jump into that collaborative task, as I just mentioned now. Um, so just to show you where you're going to go, um, my wonderful team behind the scenes are, are going to pop this link into uh, the StreamYard for you all so that you've got access to it. Um, there's also a few fantastic tips and tricks uh, to get you going. Uh, and you'll notice that this is the bit.ly link that you'll need to have access to um, at the top to get onto this. Um, and this will also be where you'll have any notes uh, as well as a recording to refer back to. Um, so you'll see if you scroll down to that second page that there is a get going with Jamboard. So what I'd love you all to do if you're on um, is to go and find uh, a group, choose a number at random uh, and pop your details in there. Uh, and if you just pop your name in, um, then this makes it really easy for you to be able to get onto. Uh, and then go ahead and select a uh, Jamboard. So activity two is where we're at right now. Um, and go and go ahead and open that up. Um, so don't all go to Jamboard number one. Uh, please do pop your name in that group there. You, you don't have to put your uh, last name in if you don't want to. Um, just your first name, just so that we know where you're going. Um, and again, I am going to open up um, this collaborative Jamboard. Um, and again, I am going to open it up uh, in the Jamboard app so that you can all see um, it here. Um, so you'll see that some some people have already jumped in. Uh, so the first collaborative Jamboard task uh, is getting you to do a what would you rather or what do you rather grid view. Uh, so grid view is the best option uh, that you can see on the left hand side. Uh, or are you a more list view kind of person? Uh, and we know that uh, grid view always wins here. So again, I can simply just go in and add a sticky note um, and I'm just gonna pop my name in like so. And again, I can then just take that and pop it on to the side here. Um, if you've already jumped in and you come up to this one, um, please feel free to jump onto any of the other slides using those arrows at the top. You can also tap up here, and this will allow you to bring up the range of different activities we have for you. Uh, so this one's looking at some memes about COVID-19. We're all going a little bit crazy, so um, why don't use that insert picture op option um, on the left um, and add a sticky note in so that you can find something there. Um, I'm just going to quickly jump through some of these ideas to get you going. Um, if you're on um, and you have the Equatio extension added, maybe you want to go and try and use the Equatio option that I mentioned earlier um, and being able to simply copy and paste that through um, in Google Docs uh, and then simply paste this in um, into your Jamboard there. Um, again, um, one of the key things to note, and this has come from the amazing Emma Pass, um, is she's done a brilliant um, analysis of what the different tools are that you get uh, when you're using the web version, if you're on an iOS device or uh, the Android app. Um, so you'll see that there are a range of different tools that you get access to uh, depending on which device you're using. Um, so please feel free to go in and use that highlight option 
uh, to go through and quickly annotate um, what your favorite tool is. Uh, mine is definitely the assistive draw option. Um, so please feel free to go through and do that. Um, again, label the continents, quickly go and find a sticky note option uh, and add those in. Or if you're on an um, Android or um, iOS device, you might like to go in uh, and try out those assistive drawing tools that I mentioned earlier. Um, again, I can quickly go through all of these options. I will point out that um, if you do try and get into a group and it's full uh, and the Jamboard doesn't load, please go and try a different one. Uh, again, here, this is just added through an image. Um, so a really, really simple way to um, celebrate birthdays um, is to sort of get to do a little get to know you. Uh, I just recently started a new role um, and a sort of a nice little icebreaker is to find out when people's birthdays are when you're doing a training session. Um, and again, those sticky notes come in handy um, to make it really easy to be able to do so. Uh, so I can simply just tap off and drag that on to the part there. And again, I can pinch it to make it smaller if I'm on the app, uh, or I can simply just use uh, those blue uh, circles on the side to resize it as well. Um, again, going through, um, love to see something that you've learned today. Um, so please go and share uh, a sticky note uh, and share something that you've loved about using Jamboard. One of the things that maybe you didn't know how to do already um, and then go through. So you can see here uh, a quick example of uh, a table in terms of how you can go through that progress of what you do during your lesson. Uh, so wherever you're up to. Uh, again, here, maybe how I can use Jamboard in my classroom. Uh, so you might like to start to share some ideas here, maybe some links to resources if you've got some. Um, I know that there's probably uh, some of my colleagues on that have done amazing things. Uh, so please feel free to share them as well. And you may even like to get really creative um, and start to do a connect for by answering questions. Um, and again, they can simply draw in or you may even like to go that one step further and actually find some little uh, coin tokens uh, using that image option here. Um, or you could even use those stickers that are here um, and you could use that simple um, star there and then drag and drop those in uh, just like so. So if you wanted to start a little Connect4 game, feel free to uh, go and explore those there as well. Um, and then for ideas, if you're going to try and get going, um, adding those sticky notes can be a really nice way to do a sort of brainstorm or word thought um, or even a mind map and being able to draw connections between those sticky notes, um, adding in images means that it doesn't just become a stagnant um, idea of mind mapping, but actually it does become more creative um, and innovative in that way there because um, your learners are able to connect both icons, images, um, and even I wonder if anyone's actually been able to put any GIFs in yet. So if you're using the uh, Jamboard app, then you can actually go and uh, if you've got any GIFs um, ready to use, uh, maybe you've been using the new Wii Video GIF option, uh, then you can actually pull those in uh, if they're saved directly in your Google Drive. So just a nice little way to be able to bring GIFs in uh, to your Jamboard as well. Uh, and again, just that ability to quickly brainstorm ideas out um, and draw branches as you sort of develop those ideas. And again, you can allow your learners to use those sticky notes to sort of share some ideas um, of how you might do it. So we um, uh, started using Jamboard um, to do some app development ideas. Uh, and it was a nice way to get our learners to think about how they could actually come up um, with some different ideas without sort of having to sit there and, and think through as many as they could. Uh, this just gives them that freedom to do so as well. Um, and I think that is it. So I can start to see, you'll notice across the top uh, that I can see where people are working. Um, so this is a nice way to see um, where each person is uh, within the task. Um, and again, I can quickly go through. So everyone's sort of still working away on that first one there. Please feel free to move around. Uh, there are plenty of other Jamboard activities for you to go on to. Um, so please feel free to go on, select another one uh, and do so there. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump back in here and I'm going to go and have a look at some of the others. Uh, 
again, if you have any questions, um, please feel free to continue to pop them in the chat. We'll be coming uh, back to sort of do a little Q&A session uh, if there are any questions there. Also, this is really interesting. We have a lot of list view here or maybe Abaddon uh, taking hijack of all of those names there. Uh, so I'm very much a grid view person. Um, again, here are some brilliant memes being added in. Uh, love it. Um, and again, what's really nice here is that I can quickly go in and sort of highlight any key points as I go through this. Um, I'm definitely feeling meetings everywhere. Uh, I've been back to back all day today, so I know that feeling. Uh, not heard of Equatio before, excited to learn more about it. Uh, definitely, if you don't have it, feel free uh, to get in contact with Text Help. Um, they will sort you out in terms of getting on and using Equatio uh, to use it there. Um, and really nice to see um, the sort of tools that people have been using. Excellent way to collaborate with students and colleagues. Definitely uh, the web version does make uh, brainstorming and collecting ideas really useful. Uh, so we've been uh, doing a lot of collaborative tasks through that now. Uh, again, here starting to see those continents coming through, uh, just simply using those sticky notes as well. So it's always great to see. Oh, I'm loving the Bitmojis. Brilliant. It's always good to see uh, use of those bitmojis coming through. Uh, and again, just developing those ideas. Um, and um, someone's gone in and drawn a fantastic shark there. Uh, but also remember that if you are on, so I've switched to the Chrome version, uh, but if you are on a Jamboard app, then you can even uh, have a go at using uh, those auto draw features. Uh, fantastic that I can see uh, a Connect for game starting to happen here which is absolutely brilliant. So at that point, um, I will come back into StreamYard, Stefan Abbott. So go ahead and add your questions into the chat and we will do our best to answer them. Um, this was one of the first questions I saw, Rachel. So Tracy's asking, is there a way to reveal the typing tool, like a type tool? Um, so the only sort of way to do that would be to add in any content over the top. Um, sometimes it can be, if, I think the best way to do it, if I remember rightly, is to use a sticky note um, because this way it will always be on top of any content that you use. Um, otherwise, it's limited um, because any pictures that you put, they'll still sort of layer on top of each other. And then we have another question. So on slide nine, there was that shark that you showed of the beautiful drawing. Is there yeah. a way to click on that whole shark and move it? Or so it, go ahead. Yeah, if you're in the Jamboard app, um, so if I just jump back onto here, um, I'm just trying to see if I've got the shark still here or not. I think it was on my other one. Um, but if you do, so for example, if I just come in here onto Equatio, um, and if I was to simply go in and draw um, clearly an amazing shark going on here, <laughs> um, is that I can't actually go in and do anything with that. But if I use that move arrow, I can go around and select that. And now I can resize that shark uh, to appear where I want it to. So yes, if you're using the Jamboard app. And then real quick, can you go back to that, Rachel? Yeah, no worries. Yep. So you can also see when she clicks that sharp, she can delete it by going to the bottom. She could hit delete or backspace. Yep. Um, so all that kind of stuff's really cool, which you can do in Jamboard. You can also, if you click um, above where it says the different slides, I think it says like what one out, yes, right there. The three dots always do something really amazing. So you can duplicate. So if you already have a template created, you can duplicate that template and then you have another slide with the same information. Um, someone in the chat was asking how they can do this with multiple students. You could give every single student a different slide yeah. or page. Um, and then every student, you could say, oh, you go to number three, this student's gonna go to number four, this one's gonna go to five, and then they're all in one jam, but separate. You can also assign this into Google Classroom. Every student can make a copy. And one of the things, um, if you're doing a collaborative um, task where you set up 
a slide for each is I always either put the student's name on a sticky note in that top left corner uh, or put their group name. So group one, group two, group three, group four, group four, group five, uh, so that they know which one they need to go on to. So that's a really nice way to be able to do that as well. And then how do you get the shapes menu toolbar at the bottom? Uh, so again, uh, Kathleen, that's one if you're using the Jamboard app. Um, so if you don't have access to the Jamboard app, what I will say is that all you need to do um, is you can either obviously use that Equatio extension that I mentioned earlier. Uh, but for example, maybe I don't have access to either of those. Then I could obviously just go and do an image search for a particular shape. Uh, so maybe it's a square that I'm looking for then I can go ahead and just simply insert that square on as well. So I've obviously got multiple options um, of the ways that I can do that as well. So if you don't have the Jamboard app, obviously that image option becomes sort of your um, lifeline uh, in terms of how you add any content in as well. And then there's a question here. Oh, go ahead. Uh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> from Robin. Uh, so can 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 we make a Jamboard, uh, put it onto Google Classroom and then make a copy for each student? Yes, you can, Robin. So I said that at the start, um, that it's very easy. All you need to do is set up the template that you want to use. Um, so if I just come in here, um, all I'd need to do is what I often recommend doing the first time is make a copy of it before you assign it to your students. This just means you've always got that template to come back to. Um, so um, they, they don't make any changes to your original if you ever want to use it again. Um, it's also worthwhile um, noting that once you've obviously made a copy in a similar way in Google Classroom uh, that you assign any, uh, any material to them, you do get that option to uh, make a copy for each student to use. You can also obviously give them just view access or edit access as well. Um, and it's worthwhile noting here that this entire Jamboard can be downloaded as a PDF. Um, and I can also save each frame as an image. So I know that I've had some um, fantastic drawings here. So I might simply go in uh, and simply save this frame as an image. Um, and again, I could then use this image uh, to sort of start off a new Jamboard as well. Can you bring an image in as a background image? so that it can't be moved. You know how like the trick in Google Slides is to take it and make it that background image and then the kids can't move it around or delete it. So what yeah. are some tips for that? It's definitely not something uh, that you can do at this stage. Um, it would be great to see. Um, again, like anything um, with uh, G Suite for Education, they're always very quick to uh, take on feedback. So make sure you do use that feedback button um, and submit that feedback so that they know that that's what teachers are looking for. Um, but equally, you saw that uh, in my sample one um, that I had used, um, sort of templates if I just come back into this one here um, because if my if I'm just getting them to use sticky notes and then they're not going to be moving anything else around so it's not usually going to be a problem um, and then equally if they're just using the pen tool as well so if they're on uh, an Android or iOS device then they can easily just start to write um, without that impacting that template as well, because they don't get the ability to move an object whilst they're using that stylus as well. Um, this question, I know we kind of hit on it with talking about, you know, making a copy in Google Classroom, but you can also allow every single student to edit on Google Classroom too. So yes. yeah, you can assign it and you can either make every single student have their own copy or you could allow every single student to add onto their Jamboard, depending on what the learning purpose is. Um, I've done this with my teachers. So I have a Jamboard set up and then they just come in and they kind of brainstorm ideas. And it's kind of nice because you can see all the ideas forming and kind of steal an idea if you need to. Definitely. Um, there was some, this one was just a comment. You can also drop your bit emojis in. Um, <laughs> I know people love their bit emojis. So um, enjoy doing that. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, I know there was a question earlier on in the chat about um, someone not being able to uh, access Jamboard uh, from their G Suite account. Uh, that probably means that your IT admin hasn't switched the Jamboard service on. So you might need to talk to your uh, IT admin to uh, get them to switch the Jamboard service on to G Suite. Um, uh, and it is 
uh, core app in G Suite, so it's fully covered by the uh, the G Suite terms and conditions, um, and is compliant with um, uh, Copper, FERPA, and, and, and GDPR, uh, as is all of the G Suite tools. Uh, and with regards to the Jamboard app, if you're running Chromebooks um, in your schools or in your districts, then you you'll be able to um, uh, deploy the uh, the Jamboard app to all of your Chromebooks as well. Right. And then will this be recorded? Yes, you can use the mm -hmm. same link. As soon as we hit in, you can go back and you can skip parts, you can slow down parts, you can pause and try it out. Um, it will be recorded. And of course, if you need to reach out to me, Abbott or Rachel, we are available. So make sure you do um, reach out to us if you do need that. How do you bring in a GIF? Can you show that again? I don't have any GIFs. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to show you, but I don't have any. Um, if you just want to take some other questions, I'll get one and then, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see if we have any. Any other questions, feel free to drop them in. Um, if not, go ahead and keep playing with some of the jams. I'm going through group number one and it is looking awesome. Um, there's a lot of, it looks like Gridview's winning Abid. Um, list view is not very good. <laughs> and there's just some really funny memes on here too. Like they're just cracking me up. Um, but just think about, there's one question on this jam about how you can use this in your classroom. So go ahead either on the chat or in the jam board, write down how you might use Jamboard in your classroom um, this week or next week, because I think it could be a really powerful tool. And yes, it is like Pear Deck, um, but again, I think it depends on what your goal is for the lesson. Okay, Steph, I'm ready if you wanna bring me in. Yep. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so if you have any gifts in your drive or uh, if you don't have any, um, go and use something like Giphy or go and use WeVideo GIF Creator and you can go and make your own. Um, and then using that plus symbol here, I can simply just tap on drive content. Uh, and then I've got some in recent here. So let's go with the shark. Um, so I'm just gonna simply tap on next. Uh, and then you'll notice here that I can then, oh, make that nice and big so that you can all see that there. Uh, we've definitely got a shark thing going on. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I don't even know why. <laughs> Uh, and, um, yeah. and also our um, all of our recordings can also be found on the Global Gag website, which is globalgag.org. Um, but, but these recordings, like Steph said, will be available on this very same link uh, immediately after we finished. And then it says, can you copy and paste a frame in one Jamboard to another Jamboard? Yes, definitely. So I'll just jump in here. So at the top here, uh, one thing just to quickly note is that there is a limit uh, of 20 jam boards uh, uh, slides essentially um, that you can have at the top here. So if I just jump into actually this one, because I know that we've got space to do so, uh, I can simply just add a frame. Now for this one here, all I then need to do is I can simply just use that duplicate option. So that's going to duplicate that there. Um, if I wanted to save the entire Jamboard, so for example, if we come back to this cat one that I was using earlier, I can tap on those three dots and use save frame as image. And then what I might like to do is simply just jump into a new frame. Uh, and again, I can go on to add an image and I can simply upload that image that I just downloaded there, like so. So if I wanted to do that, I can, and obviously I can move that around and I could resize it uh, or just rink it down um, like so. And then we had a question about, can you change the fonts? No, you can't change the fonts yet. Again, so, feedback, feedback, feedback. Yeah, if you give feedback to Google, they will most likely listen eventually. I know right now their focus is Google Meet. Um, so there you go. And did you see any other questions I missed, Abed? Uh, no, there was one earlier on um, saying that they missed out on the uh, um, the comparisons between uh, Jamboard on the web uh, on Android and in iOS. Uh, if you go back to the, um, the the collaborative doc that we had, I put a link to um, Emma Pass's tweets uh, where she's where she's highlighted the uh, the three 
um, the, the, the three columns with all the differences, but that on the screen is what you see now. Um, so obviously the most feature filled version is uh, the Android app, which will run on Android tablets and uh, Chromebook devices. Uh, and then you've got uh, an iOS app as well. And then you've got the uh, the basic version, which runs through the Chrome browser. And I think that is it for the um, for the questions. Um, I will share my screen again. Um, well, Abbott's waiting to do that. I just wanted to say thank you, Rachel. That was awesome. Um, I watched your webinar in Jamboard a couple of weeks ago, and I was suggesting a Pear Deck to teachers, which is a great tool. Um, but sometimes they just want a quick whiteboard type app. And so Jamboard was something that I wasn't suggesting. I was suggesting the Pear Deck um, add-on with the Google Drawing, like the drawing part of it. But I mean, Jamboard is great for math teachers, especially during remote learning. There's so much you can do with it and kids can collaborate together using it. So thank you, thank you, Rachel. You're welcome, thanks for having me on. Yeah, no, th thank you again. That, that was a great session. And uh, I'm sure everyone watching has has got some really great ideas as to how to get going with um, with Jamboard. Um, before you go, uh, please, everyone, do jump on to the uh, feedback form. Um, we really appreciate your feedback. Um, and it'll be really uh, helpful for us to, um, to, to learn more about uh, how you felt about the session. And it will help us to uh, frame sessions uh, for the future. We've got we've got some really great sessions um, lined up uh, both this week and um, uh, and in the coming weeks. Um, follow uh, follow the three of us on Twitter um, and also follow Global Geg um, uh, and then also sign up to the uh, to to the sign up form there uh, to to be informed about uh, future events. But um, with that, uh, thank you, Rachel and Stephanie, once again and. Um, uh, we'll see everyone next time. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone.